So let's get started. Did you have a good lunch? Yeah. All right. So today I will be presenting to you uh, my talk, Getting Started with PHP Core Development, which means that I will be explaining you ways in which every one of you can contribute something to PHP, to make PHP itself better. So why am I giving this talk? Well, we have quite a large open source community in PHP, right? You can uh, see here four popular PHP open source projects. Who, by, just by show of hands, who has ever used one of these four projects? Let me see. Most of people? Okay. So who has ever contributed something to one of these four projects? Still a bit. So these projects have quite a large number of contributors. But what all these pro uh, projects share is the language they use, PHP itself. So who here uses PHP? I'm surprised that at a PHP conference I see some people keeping their hands down. Still, most of us use PHP. Who has ever contributed something to PHP itself? Two, two hands? That's exactly the point, right? We all use PHP intensively, so why don't we contribute something back to PHP? Of course, there's a very good reason for that, right? If we go and look under the hood of PHP, right at the center, there's a part that's written in C. And for us as PHP developers, it's quite hard to get used to the C programming, right? And this part of PHP is what they also call the core. Now this is a poster for the film, the core. Anyone knows it? It's incidentally, it's kind of my favorite movie. And for those who don't know it, uh, this is a movie in which scientists discover that there's something wrong with the core of the earth. So what they do, what of course they do, is they take astronauts and send them on a journey to the core of the earth where they should plant nukes, right? Because every problem can be solved with nukes. And well, these astronauts have to fix the core of the earth and at the end they manage to do so and they save mankind. Right. And I mainly like this film because it proves that integer overflow is a real problem. This film is so bad that it becomes enjoyable again. But what I also learned kind of from this film is that even though you're not trained for something or you might not know whether you can pull something off, it might actually be doable, right? So today I will be telling you about my own journey to the core. I'm a PHP developer. I never had any training in C or C++ or any language of that kind. I just wrote PHP. And somehow I got into the core and tried to fix some things and I managed. So today I want to share you how that happened and how you can also make this journey. So once upon a time I was processing some XML data, something like this. Uh, an XML document where we have two bar elements, one in a namespace and one without a namespace. And I was processing this XML with PHP DOM, uh, DOM document. And if on such a document we would call the get elements by tag name function with bar, then we would get an array or a DOM node list of length two back, right? So this would return both the full bar elements and the bar elements. Now suppose we only want the bar element without an, uh, with a namespace. Then we could use the namespace aware variant of get elements by tag name, get elements by tag name ns, and pass in the example.com namespace, and then we get an array of one element back, which is only the first elements, the full bar elements. Uh, but what I wanted was to only get the other elements the bar element without a namespace. So according to the documentation, I just had to pass in an empty namespace instead of a namespace in the get elements by tag name ns function. 
and I should be fine. So I tried this, but it returned an empty list. I didn't get any element back. And I was really annoyed by this bug because it hindered me from doing my job. And I thought, well, I could try to work around this or implement some filter manually or, well, just try to work around it. But I thought, well, maybe I could try to help fix this bug in PHP. I thought, maybe, yes, we can. So the first part of the journey was to look into the PHP bug tracker, right? You probably all know the PHP bug tracker at bugs.php.net. And that's the first stop where I went. I went to look for other occurrences of the same bug. What helps when reporting a bug is writing a good bug report. PHP uh, itself has a guide about how to report a bug so that someone will actually want to fix it, right? Stating the exact circumstances under which something happens, giving all the necessary details, providing a script that, uh, with the expected output and the actual output. So if you ever want to report a bug, read this guide and write a good bug report. Before reporting any bug, please search for existing bugs that may already describe your bug. And I did so, and I got back a report, which described the exact same bug that I was facing. And it was already open for two and a half years without any signs of people working on a fix. So at least um, there's a form in the bug tracker where you can report that you have encountered the same issue and you can say whether that was on the same PHP version or another PHP version, same OS or another OS. And that's quite better than just posting me too comments or something, because this enables the PHP core developers to actually gather statistics about how this bug can be, can be reproduced. If you can sharpen the bug details in another way by providing circumstances under which the bug does not happen or an OS on which it does not happen, please leave that in the comments because that can help actually fix and pin down the bug. How you can also help is by triaging bugs. The PHP bug tracker actually has a URL shown here that just redirects you to a random bug. And because the PHP bug tracker contains so many old bugs that nobody looks after anymore, it would be really helpful if people would just grab a random bug, try to reproduce it, and close it if not, or report that they can still reproduce it if they can. So in my case, I found a bug report, but no one was really, well, apparently no one was really working on it. So I tried to get to that myself. But before I should do that, I first wanted to try to build PHP from source control, right? Because maybe the bug just wasn't closed because someone wasn't aware that it existed. And the bug was just solved in a new version that was bound to release a week later or something. So when compiling PHP from Git, you need to install some, PHP, uh, some dependencies required for compilation and building of PHP. Uh, on Linux, you can usually do so using your package man manager like apt-get or yum. Then you need to clone PHP source, which is on GitHub nowadays. And if you are used to compiling software on Linux, you might know or you might be used to using a configure script and then doing make. PHP does not have a configure script. It has tools to build a configure script. So the next step you need to do is build a configure script using buildconf. And in the background, buildconf uses M4 macros, the kind of templates Sebastian Bergman told you that he doesn't want anyone to have to work with this. PHP does. Uh, and it builds a configure script from these files. And if you've done that, you can just configure PHP, either using a default build settings 
or you can customize it. You can say which extensions you want. So, you, for example, you can disable the DOM extension and disable the CGI uh, server API, but you can enable AppCache and give a different path to SQLite 3 because you use a custom library for that something. And there's also a help flag in which you can see all the options that you can pass to configure. And if you've run configure, then you can finally compile PHP by just running make. And especially the first time, that will probably be very slow because PHP needs to co uh, compile all the files. To make it a bit faster, you can supply a flag to make that will use all the cores on your computer, which will make it faster. And if you're done running make, then you can find the PHP binaries in the server API directories under the correct API. So there's a CLI in SAPI slash CLI slash PHP, and there's a PHP CGI binary in SAPI slash CGI slash PHP CGI. And you can just run them, and you have the latest and greatest version of PHP even before it's released. If you've updated, uh, your git uh, your git clone or you might have made changes to it for subsequent builds you can just run make and php will or make will only recompile the files that have actually changed sometimes that doesn't work out exactly because uh, some templates for the configuration script or something may have changed so if that doesn't work there's a whole density that you can try to make it compile again. So you first have to try make clean, and if that doesn't work, you can try make this clean, which deletes and recompiles some more files. And then you can try to build conf again with a force flag and then configure again. And well, that's just sometimes needed after a git pull or git checkout. Uh, there are also instructions for building on Windows, which are slightly more complicated, but they can be found on the PHP wiki. And you may have noticed that this process is actually quite difficult. So there were some people that tried, hey, can't we make working on these things and compiling PHP uh, from source a bit better? And they came up with some solutions with Vagrant boxes that can be used to compile the PHP core. One of those Vagrant boxes is Ramsey slash Vagrant PHP source dev created by Ben Ramsey. And there's also PHP 7 dev written by Rasmus Lerdorf, the creator of PHP, at the time when PHP 7 was developed and he wanted to enable people to try out PHP 7 easier and test their apps on it and report bugs. And this is the Vagrant box that I ended up using for doing my work on PHP core because I use Windows and compiling on Windows is a disaster. So I just used this Vagrant box to be able to compile it easily on Linux. If you have such a new latest and greatest build of PHP, you can try running the test suite. So PHP has a quite extensive test suite, which can be run using the run test script. And as you can see, there are actually two PHP binaries involved here. There's the PHP binary used to run the run test script, and the PHP binary that's actually the system under test, so the PHP binary that gets tested. So we need to provide the PHP binary that gets tested to the run test script using the dash p flag. If you want to use the script running run test.php as the system under test, there's a shortcut for that. So you can just use dash capital P. And there's even a shortcut for that, which makes it all easier to remember. You can just run make test. And if you do so, you get about 10,000 lines of output, of which most should say something like pass, but you will also get some things with skip, fail, or xfail. So skip means that some tests are skipped because you don't have a certain dependency on your system, or you configured PHP to be built without that dependency, so the test for that dependency or, or for the extension using that dependency cannot work. Uh, some tests may just fail. Uh, PHP currently has quite a number of failing tests in their test suite. And there's also xfail, which is an expected failure. And that's a way that PHP uh, documents known issues or bugs in third-party dependencies uh, 
So they write a test that's supposed to fill and document using XFill that it's supposed to fill. And that way they can track when the bug in the third party code is solved because then the XFill test won't fill anymore. So if XFill tests fail, that's expected. If other tests fail, that's not expected. At the end of make tests, there's a summary of the tests that passed and failed. You can see that in my test run, more than 1% of the tests actually failed. If a test fails, uh, the run test script uh, gives you the option to write or to send a test report to the PHP QA team so they can see what tests failed on your system. Uh, if you're running a normal common system like Ubuntu or Debian or, well, normal uh, flavors of Windows, I don't think it's that useful to send them reports because they should already know. PHP gets built uh, using a continuous integration server on these platforms. But if you have some kind of exotic platform, one that PHP doesn't regularly get tested on, it might be useful to send reports about some tests failing on your platform. Um, running this complete test suite took about 50 minutes on my system. So that's quite a large, uh, large amount of time. So there are also options for running tests to run only a subset of all the tests. And you can do so by passing the tests flag uh, or the tests uh, environment variable to make test. So you can specify a path to a single test to run only that test. You can specify a path to a directory or an extension to only test that extension. And you can even kind of misuse this environment variable to pass other flags, like the verbose flag, to see more verbose outputs with your tests. And in the same way, you can also provide the help flag, in which you can see all the options you can pass in using this trick. So now that we know how to write tests, uh, how to run tests, I wanted to also write a test for my bug. Because, well, if I plan on trying to solve it, uh, it would be nice if, if I could see that it was actually solved and that it won't break anymore in the future. So I tried to figure out how to write tests for PHP. Well, to start, in the bug reports, there was already uh, quite extensive information about how to reproduce the bug. Someone already wrote a test script, said, hey, this is the expected result, this is the actual result, and they differ. That's a bug. So I tried to turn this test script into a formal test for PHP. Well, that might seem difficult, given that we write PHP projects and our tests are written in PHP using tools like PHP unit, PHP spec, Codeception maybe. And the PHP core is written in C. So in what language would its tests be written? I thought, oh no, now I have to write C. It turns out PHP is tested using PHP T tests which is actually a kind of a plain text format with some PHP sections in it. So there are really no C skills required to write tests for PHP. So PHP is mainly basically plain text with sections and some of those sections contain PHP codes. And the tests work in a really simple way. They let PHP print some outputs and just check that against outputs you provide as expected. And if they differ, the test fails. So a very simple PHP T test may look like this. There's a test section, which just defines the name of the test. There's a file section, which contains a PHP script that is then executed. And there's an expect section that says what the expected output of the script should be. You should note that we use Vardump for outputting uh, the, the test outputs and not echo or print R. Why is that? because Vardump also prints the type of the output. If we were to use print here, we wouldn't distinguish between the string 43 and the integer 43, because it would be printed the same. And if PHP would then have a bug that for 42 plus 1 returned the string 43, we would never find out, right? So using Vardump, we can check that the type of output returns here is actually also 43. These tests are organized in a folder structure, 
Um, there are directories tests and Zen tests, which contain the test for the Zen engine that powers PHP, so really the PHP core. There are also tests for the standard extension, which are the functions you are mainly using on a day-to-day -day basis, like the array functions and the string functions and the file system functions. These are officially not part of the PHP engine itself, but of the standard extension, which is al always included. There are tests for the other extensions, like the DOM extension and the MySQL extension, etc. And there are tests for specific server APIs like CGI, CLI, PHP, FPM, etc. So the, the code that glues PHP to the environment in which it runs. There's, already, uh, there's also a fixed naming scheme for these tests. So tests that provide a test for a specific bug get a test name derived from the bug ID. Uh, for specific functions, there are various patterns. There are basic tests, which just test the normal behavior of the function. There are variations that test edge cases. And there are error tests, which test the error conditions of the function. So when you provide the wrong arguments to the function, or uh, some connection could not be opened, etc. So using this naming scheme and using this information about PHP T tests, I was able to write a PHP T test for the bug I was trying to solve. So I wrote a test description using the bug ID. I just used the test script that somebody else already provided uh, in the bug report, and I put one as the expected output. I ran this on my system using make test, and I got back a failed test summary in which my test failed. Um, for this failing test, for every failing test, a number of uh, output files are generated by the PHP test runner. There's a PHP file, which is actually just a PHP script with the contents of the file section. There's a shell script to execute that. There's a file with the expected output and a file with the actual output. And there's a diff file between the two. And there's a log file, which actually includes information out of all the other sections. So if we were to show the log output for our failing test, we would get that the expected output is 1 and the actual output is 0, exactly the bug we're trying to face. So in this case, our failing test means a great success. There can be multiple other sections in PHP T tests. There's a skip if section. Uh, and if the, the skip if section gets uh, executed as PHP code, and if it prints the word skip, somewhere, then the, the test is skipped. So if we want to write tests for the DOM extension, we would, in a skip if section, we would check if the DOM extension is actually loaded, and otherwise print some text with the text skip, so that the test gets skipped. Uh, extensions usually have a shared skip if include file, so that they all share the same logic for skipping tests if that extension is not loaded. There are also other sections that you can use, for example, to simulate HTTP inputs using get, post, put, cookie, and headers. So you can simulate uh, your scripts being called with certain get parameters and a cookie and HTTP headers, and you can use that in your tests. There's also expect f and expect regex. Uh, sometimes the exact output of the script is not known. For example, if we were uh, opening a resource to a file, internally that resource gets a resource identifier from PHP, which is just a number. And when var dumping that resource, that resource number gets printed. But we don't know in advance what that resource identifier will be when running the script. So we can use expectf, which expects a printf kind of pattern, and it tries to match the output against that pattern. So if we w get back resource followed by an integer between parentheses of type stream, any integer is okay. As long as it matches this pattern, the test will pass. There's also a clean section, which is for logic to clean up after tests. If you make some temporary file to test something on, please clean it up afterwards, because otherwise any, peop uh, any person running this test suite would end up with a lot of leftover files on its system. There's also INI section, which specifies custom directives, uh, configuration directives for PHP to run uh, when running the tests. So we can set the precision to seven, 
which has to do with the representation of float variables. And if we then fart in pi, uh, the pi should be printed with exactly seven digits. If we were not to set the precision to seven, we could have get uh, pi printed with another number of, of digits. So the test might fail, which was not what we intended. You can also use the exfil section, which I explained earlier, to mark a test as an expected failure and to track bugs in, uh, in upstream code or hard to fix bugs that would require a major overhaul. Writing tests is actually an easy way to get started with PHP core development without having any C skills, right? It's just writing PHP and every one of us can write PHP. It's useful to actually work on tests for part that need tested, uh, need testing. So PHP has a code coverage report at gcov.php.net where you can see which lines of code are already tested and which aren't. So if you want to help out writing tests for PHP, you can look at this report, find functions or directories or, uh, or files that aren't tested enough and write tests for those. Currently, there's an initiative called PHP Test Fest. Uh, there was an earlier edition a couple of years ago. Now there's a 2017 edition, uh, which runs from September till December. And you can participate through a local user group by yourself. And the goal is that people write tests for the PHP core. And if you do so, especially if you're a new contributor to PHP, you might even win prizes with that. You can see phptestfest.org for more information about this. So if you want to write tests for PHP, uh, there are some resources that you can, uh, can consult. Uh, the PHP QA team has a tutorial on writing tests, and there's also a really good tutorial with videos by Semi K Powers. And the PHP Test Fest uh, website also has quite a, a good tutorial for writing tests. The last two links are about Docker-based solutions for writing and running tests for PHP, which might also be interesting to check out. So I wasn't there yet. I had a test for my bug, which might be useful if someone else wanted to fix it and then verify that it actually was fixed. But I wanted this bug fixed. So I looked into editing the PHP source code. Um, so let's go back for a moment to the bug we were trying to solve, right? We were loading data into a DOM document and we called the get elements by tag name ns function on it and we got back a wrong result. So I started looking into the PHP source code where I could try to start fixing this bug. And I looked into the xdom directory, which contains the source files for the DOM extension, and there were things related to DOM attributes and DOM documents and DOM elements, and I think, hey, this bug is in the DOM document, so let's look at document.c. And if I then open that and uh, look for the get elements by tag name ns function, I see all kinds of things like this. And it's all everywhere there are C macros. PHP uses macros quite intensively, and that makes it quite hard to read. You're not actually writing C, you're, art, you're writing C as PHP uses it, which makes things even more difficult, even if you know a bit or two about C. But I was able to guess from this that the implementation of the get elements by tag name ns function would be given by DOM document get elements by tag name ns. So I searched for that string and found something with PHP function with that name. So I thought, well, this is probably the implementation of the function with that name. Uh, and I figured that what it was doing here, uh, I looked up the send parse parameters and that's how PHP parses its input parameters. And from the documentation, I could find out that uh, capital O means that it expects an object of a given class, in this case, the DOM document itself. And the SS means that it then expects two strings, the, the local name and the namespace URI in different order. And I could see, uh, well, actually, there are different types that you can pass to the send parse parameters. Uh, they're all documented, so you can either specify an array or a mixed uh, value or a double. There are also ways to make arguments variable or optional. 
And I traced where this data went, and eventually it went into a DOM named node iter, which is probably an iterator for DOM nodes. And I traced this, uh, this code a bit more, and eventually I found this function. Uh, the DOM get elements by tag name NS raw. And looking at it a bit, I found out that, well, it accepts an argument node P, which is an element to test whether it satisfies a certain namespace and local name filter. And there's NS and local, which are the filter namespace and the local name we want to filter for. And somewhere in this function was a condition to check whether that element satisfied that filter. So it consists of multiple conditions. And the first condition, NS is nil, means just if we have no namespace filter, right? NS was the namespace filter. If we don't filter by any namespace, well, then it's always okay. Um, otherwise, we have to check whether the, uh, the node we're trying to test actually has a namespace, and then either it should match the filter that we provided, so it should match the namespace that we provided to get elements by tag name ns, or we should have provided a, a wildcard filter to get elements by tag name ns. If you pass in a star there, it would return any element with a namespace. So what we're missing here is the case where the node has an empty namespace, has no namespace, and the filter namespace is also the empty namespace. So I looked at how the existing code did this, and I added in this line. So I added in an extra condition, if the node has an empty namespace, and we also want to filter by the empty namespace, that node should also match. And then I recompiled PHP, and ran my test again, and it passed. So I fixed my bug. Well, I had only fixed that bug in my own compiled version of PHP. And I thought it would be useful if others could also use that fix and if I could run an official version again. So I made a pull request on GitHub for this bug. And then the question was, against which version should I make that pull request, right? Uh, PHP has information on that. And you need to submit pull requests for bug fixes against the oldest still supported version. Actually, at the time I was writing this, that was PHP 5.6. But I didn't have the infrastructure to test on PHP 5.6. And it was in December. And PHP 5.6 would be end of life uh, in two uh, 2017, so at the end of December. So I thought, well, I'll just wait one week before submitting this pull request, then PHP 5.6 is end of life, and I could just submit a pull request against PHP 7, which is also a good way to motivate people to upgrade to PHP 7, because it contains a fix for this bug, and PHP 5.6 doesn't. So apparently, the PHP maintainers are quite active on GitHub. Uh, only two hours later, Joe Watkins, one of the uh, maintainers, merged my pull request, and I was a PHP core contributor. And what I learned from this is that it's not that difficult right, to make changes to the C code of PHP. It's just a matter of trying to read past the C details. You see all the syntactic fluff and the macros, and just try something, see what happens, see where the data comes from and where it goes to and what can happen with that. And most of all, rely on the existing tests. The tests are actually quite good. And if you can manage to make a change, fix a bug without uh, having any other extra failing tests, you're probably OK. You probably made a good fix. If you want to get started with this, I can highly recommend to start uh, with bugs in more logic-heavy extensions, like having logic that is not directly related to the way PHP works. I started working on a DOM extension, so it has a lot of DOM-related logic, which I can understand without needing to know everything about PHP. If you start to work on bugs completely in the PHP core, you have to know all of the PHP internals to make a fix, which is probably more difficult. When contributing code, there's a large difference between bug fixes and features. For bug fixes, you can just create a pull request against the oldest supported branch. 
There's no need to file an RFC or something or to get permission to work on that or discuss it, except when it's difficult and you can't get out of it in your, on your own. The only thing is you have to have a bug in the bug tracker that you can refer to. For features, things are a bit more difficult. Uh, features are always created using a pull request against the master branch, and those require a formal RFC. So for features, PHP has an RFC process, which formalizes the way that new versions of PHP are shaped and decisions about that are taken. Uh, so to follow that process, you must first introduce DID to the mailing list and gather some initial reactions. If they are positive, you can follow up with a formal proposal, which is put on the PHP RFC wiki. Then there follows an obligatory discussion period in which people can advance the pros and cons of your proposal. And eventually, the proposal is voted on, which will be either positive or negative, so it gets implemented if someone is able to or not. And for more information about the PHP RFC process, you can look at their wiki or Ben Ramsey, who has uh, given a talk about his own experience trying to add a feature, in this case the array column function, to PHP. And he describes all the process he went through and how he did that. So if you want to know more about writing code for PHP, well, there was a talk this morning by Derek Rattens, and if you didn't watch it, you should look into it because he also showed a lot of writing uh, C code for PHP, extensions in this case, but it's not that different from the core. Uh, there's also a lot of information on the internet about the PHP internals, but it's quite scattered. So you can look at the PHP website and the PHP wiki. And there's also an, in, uh, an initiative called phpinternalsbook.com, which is by three PHP uh, internals contributors who we'll try to write an online book together to bundle all this information that is scattered around the web. And there's a recent blog post by Sammy K. Powers about his own experience with finding and patching a bug in the PHP source. There's also the PHP internals mailing list for which there exists a handy interface at externals.io. So, I have fixed this bug and uh, I was really happy with it. It got eventually got released in a new version of PHP and so I could use my PHP script without a bug. And I got quite a hang of it, uh, fixing bugs in PHP. So I started to look into some more bugs in the DOM extension, trying to fix those. And I made some more pull requests. And then sometime later, another pull request with a bug fix got merged, again by Joe Watkins. And when he merged that, he asked me, hey, this is, the, this is actually also a documentation problem. Can you also make a patch on the documentation? And I was like, whoa, how do I do this? So I tried to figure that out. And it turns out that one of the easiest ways to get started is on edit.php.net. This is the PHP Duckbook, Duckbook online editor. So it's an online editor for the documentation. And if you can figure out how it works, it's actually pretty easy. So to enter this environment, you need to log in, which you can do anonymously, but it's better if you can log in using your GitHub account, because then the PHP core contributors can link your contributions to the documentation, to the patches you made on GitHub, so they know who you are. You can also log in with your Instagram account. I really have no idea why that, that would make sense. Uh, you can also choose a language that you want to edit. So by default, that would probably be the English language, but you can also uh, edit the translations for other languages. And if you log in, you get a screen like this. And on the left side, there's uh, a tab called All Files, and there you can find the files that you can edit. There's a top directory per language. So if you chose the English language, then you probably only see an EN directory. And within that, there are different directories. Uh, there's the, uh, the reference documentation, right? So the documentation of all the extensions and the functions and the classes and the methods. And there are descriptions of the features of PHP under the language directory. This is about the OOP features of PHP and the operators and uh, iterators, things like that. So the first step is to find this correct file. And there's actually an easier way to this, I found out later. Uh, 
if you are at the PHP documentation, there's a small link at, uh, uh, at the top right, which says edit. And if you click that, you go directly to edit.php.net where that file opens. So you can also look up the file uh, or the page in the documentation that you want to edit and use this link. Well, then you can make your changes. Um, PHP documentation is written using docbook XML. And there are very hefty books written about that, which you can consult. But it's probably easier to just peek into the other docs and see how they did something or how they wrote something down and just copy that and adapt it to your needs. It's probably easier than struggling through a book like this. Once you've made your changes, you can preview them, or at least you should be able to. There's a preview button in the UI, which at the moment that I was testing this, it was broken. I don't know how it, uh, how it is now. Uh, well, maybe someone can contribute to fix. And the last step, which also wasn't obvious, is uh, if you made your changes, you can submit them as a patch. Uh, at the left sidebar, there's uh, a section called work in progress, where you can see the work of everyone who's editing stuff. So I don't know why. And you can right click on your own work there and choose submit, uh, submit as patch. And then you submit the patch for uh, for inclusion in the documentation. I don't know if anyone of you has ever written a user note uh, on the PHP documentation online uh, or read the user notes, but I think they have a very poor reputation and most people don't consider the user notes when looking up the documentation. So next time you're considering adding a user note, you can also, if the documentation is clearly wrong or lacking something, you could also go to edit.php.net, try to make a patch for the documentation to fix the problem instead of correcting it kind of with a user note. So these patches have to be merged by someone else with commit access. If you have made a couple such changes, you can also apply for this commit access yourself. It helps to have a couple of changes in the past so that you can show, hey, I know how this works. I can make those changes myself. I'm responsible. Uh, you can apply for documentation karma, like it's called, and then you can commit your documentation patches yourself. If you don't like edit.php.net, which is totally understandable, uh, you can make it better. It's just a tool uh, in written in PHP and it's hosted on GitHub. So you can just fork it and just make your changes and submit a pull request. Or you can set up your own documentation uh, development environment for the documentation, which involves cloning a few GitHub repositories also with the PHP websites. And there's an excellent tutorial online about how to do this. So you can make your changes locally and test them and then commit. So where can you best help out with the documentation? Well, the bug tracker also has a bug type doc for documentation bugs. So you can just go to the bug tracker and look for uh, bugs of type doc and see if you can fix those documentation bugs. There's also a check missing docs script in PHP, which checks for which uh, functions and extensions and methods there is no documentation yet. So it prints out a list of functions that still need to get documentation. And in the edit.php.net sidebar, there's also a section failure to meet strict standards, which is kind of a, a check style for the documentation. So the, th these are mostly minor issues, but solving them can make the documentation better. You can also help with translations. The PHP documentation is translated in much different languages, uh, which need to be kept up to date with the English documentation. Uh, there might be missing translations, translations that got out of date with the English version, uh, translations that need to be reviewed, because there's also a review process for these translations, or translations that contain errors. And if you log in to edit.php.net uh, with a different language than English, you get an overview of the status of that translation. So you can see that the Polish translation of PHP, of the PHP documentation, is about 5.9% up to date. So more than 90% of the Polish documentation is either missing or outdated. At least you do better than the Dutch uh, because they have 0% of their documentation entirely up to date. The French are quite active with their uh, translations. So they have more than 80% up to date. S 
but this might be something to contribute to. Uh, it depends, I think, on the language uh, and the country, how many people use the translated documentation and how many people use the English documentation, whether this is useful. So, in this talk, we have seen numerous ways to contribute to PHP, right? You can file bug reports, good bug reports. You can help triage bugs. You can run the test for PHP, especially if you have some exotic system somewhere that PHP needs to be tested on and others don't do that. You can write tests for PHP for bugs. Also, if you can't fix the bug, it's useful to write a test for it and just put it as a patch in the bug tracker or something. Or you can write tests for situations that do, go, uh, that do work right now. You can contribute bug fixes yourself by trial and error, maybe or maybe you know what you're doing, but even by trial and error, you can come up with pretty good bug fixes. New features, which require an RFC, but why not? You can make documentation patches, translate the documentation, or help out on tools like edit.php.net. So why should you contribute, right? Well, first of all, it helps to get your own bugs fixed by providing a good bug report or tests, you can motivate others to work on the bugs you reported. Or maybe you could even fix your own bugs so that you don't uh, run into them anymore. Uh, all this also makes PHP better in a sense, right? Less bugs, better PHP. And that maybe ma also makes PHP more popular under developers, which, well, is good for your career. Um, by doing this, you learn a lot about PHP. And if you go into the code of PHP itself, you might also learn a bit or two about C. And most of all, PHP is open source, right? No one paid for it. All these people are volunteers. You can give back to the community by helping out on PHP. So the main thing I want you to take away from this talk is you don't have to be an expert to contribute to PHP core, right? Just like in the core, those people were astronauts. They weren't made to go to the center of the Earth and things like that, but they managed. We are PHP developers, which is kind of like an astronaut. And we're not made to, uh, to contribute or to, uh, to know everything about the PHP core, but we can still make it work, right? So, if you have any feedback, please leave it on joined in. Help me improve this talk. Uh, for questions, you can ask them now, in which case I get to throw this at you. Uh, otherwise, I will be here hanging around. You can contact me on Twitter. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Okay. So I will be throwing this to you. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the talk. It was really, really great. Uh, I'm having a question about the tooling because I've myself just opened up the PHP source and it's like, just you said, it's all the way macros up and down and having a decent IDE to browse uh, through it is, is nearly impossible. So uh, when you're doing edits, what are you using? Uh, I myself use Sublime Text. So just an ordinary text editor uh, and just a lot of searching, <laughs> just a lot of control F. Um, I tried out C Lion, which is a C IDE from JetBrains, which you all know from PHP Storm. So I thought, well, I know how to use PHP Storm. Maybe C Lion is a good fit for this. Uh, but it turns out they cannot really handle the way PHP works with macros. So C Lion does not give you any helpful extras on the PHP source. So I don't know about uh, other IDEs for C out there. I heard some people are using Eclipse for this, uh, which would work pretty okay. Um, but well, it is doable with a normal text editor. Okay, so uh, if I can, a second question is about debugging, right? Because uh, normally you do a var dump or an echo, so you would say so in PHP, right? But yeah. when you're dealing with like C++ or C, you can use breakpoints, right? So uh, C Lion was also a pick for me because I, I thought I will be using breakpoints around, but uh, apparently it, it won't be a case, right? Yeah. Um 
even if you're just using a text editor, uh, you can attach the GDB, the uh, GNU debugger, to PHP uh, to place breakpoints on it. Um, I guess MEK Powers also has a tutorial on that uh, in his in his writing test tutorial. He also mentions using GDB to debug test failures. Uh, so you might want to look into that. So you can just use a debugger outside of your IDE to debug these cases. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. <laughs>